So here we are on the Yamaha YT624EJ. Today we're gearing up for a boroscope inspection. So I've gone ahead, taken all the covers off, taken the spark plug out. Uh, I took the covers off as well as the exhaust off in order to try and get into the exhaust uh, port through the valve, but the uh, valve doesn't open nearly far enough to get the boroscope in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, footage from the boroscope. I also took this uh, intake cover off. The two screws allow us to see into the carburetor there, but that opening is not big enough either to get a look at the intake valve. So we're gonna go ahead primarily through the spark plug hole right down there and get as best of footage as we can. All right, so boroscope's hooked up, headset's hooked up, let's go in. So using a boroscope, takes a little bit of getting used to. So here we've got the engine, we've got the exhaust there that's off on the left, and then we've got the spark plug that's off here. So if we go into the exhaust port first, uh, notice this camera is not a super high-end camera, so you got to give it a bit of time to acclimatize to the light. So here we see the uh, valve stem coming down from the uh, valve cover and the rocker area. One, one observation we can note here is that we don't see any oil leaking down it, which is a good thing. It means our valve seals, well, at least from this vantage point, appear intact. If I go down, I don't know how far down I can get here. So I can go down towards the valve and then, you know, see if it gets in here. Ooh. Kind of stuck. Let's try going some more. And here we see the, the valve kind of in the top portion of the image as well as the valve seat down in the bottom try to rearrange here and go from the other side you know you can kind of see that the valve is intact you see that there's no major components missing you know the seat doesn't have a big dent in it so these are all good things um, but just given the the angle of the exhaust port it's not uh, the best for boroscoping and then we've got the valve stem that's kind of blocking our passage when you're doing a boroscope, it's kind of hard to know which what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right. You just go around looking for stuff, and if you don't find anything, you move on. You don't can't really catalog necessarily what's what unless you've got it pre-labeled. Now let's go into the spark plug hole. So we can go down. You can inspect the threads on the way down. So here, you know, it's not, not very useful. So we go down here. Now we've got one of the valves are open right now because I've been playing with it on the exhaust. So here... And go down you can see the surface of the piston shiny in some areas carbonized in others um, you know some deposits there again I'm not too sure what the typical carbon patterning of this machine is but it, there is a, a decent amount of it but again, boroscopes can be deceiving. Sometimes you think it looks really, really bad until you have a look at it in person. You see that it's super minor. So here we can see to the left, we can see the cross hatching of the cylinder. So by going round and round here, we can kind of look for any scoring in the cylinder, which we wouldn't expect on this machine uh, because the compression was good. And there's no, you know, we kind of don't run it in the summer, so there's not like there's sand that's going to go through here. So I like to just go around, so here, by kind of twisting the, uh, so here a little sp speck here, it could have come down from the uh, valves and when we're in there, you can still see the cross hatching and the reflection, which is nice. Keep going round, <clears throat> that's where the piston meets the sidewall. Um, keep going if we can, so right now I've got the boroscope all twisted up and uh, sometimes you can't get around the whole thing because it's like twisting kind of a, a noodle and you kind of run out of leverage at the end there. So let's keep going as best we can. Just trying to use two hands here to, to maneuver it. Um, so I don't know if that's an arrow pointing to the exhaust or not. I'm not sure. So I like what I'm seeing because the cross hatching is nice and the, the piston wash, not to me, it doesn't look bad or anything. Just keep trying to go around here. 
So I think the the piston's all the way down there now. We can let's pull out of here a little bit and crank crank the cord a bit and see what happens. Oh, so here's the pistons coming in. So I think uh, now one of the things we can try and do in here is maybe push on the borescope until it goes inverted and then try to look up at some of the valves. Let's try to do that, you know, and I can get my borescope stuck in there and spend the rest of the day trying to get it out. Let's do that. That'd be fun. Oh, here we are trying to turn around. I've got a bunch of it shoved in. And now as a small bonus, we're going to inspect this muffler screen and see what's in there. So we've got the screen off here, it comes off with a pair of pliers, it's stuck on there pretty good. So once you do get the um, clamp off, you have to kind of just twist this off with some, uh, I use some channel locks. Uh, if we look inside here, we can see that the, uh, the soot accumulation is not bad at all for four years. Pretty good, oh, that's a good view there. So there's a couple deposits. But I don't worry about any of that. Oh, okay, here we go. Well, a couple components here. A little washer, put that back. Just take a small brush to it and then I'll see what comes out of it. So, half a can of brake cleaner later, I can now confirm I've got the cleanest spark arrestor in all of town. Um, really, there wasn't very much soot at all uh, in this. So I wouldn't uh, get too caught up in going about cleaning it. You can see you can see in there really nice it wasn't jammed up or anything. Um, even the brushing I, I did of it had nothing come out of it so I really wouldn't worry about the contamination of this thing. I'm four years in so all good. As a note here when looking up the exhaust uh, screen torque we noticed that the previous version had a screen style spark arrestor versus a mesh style. But the snowblower service manual has the style that we have on our unit, that I have on my unit. Um, finally, the torque there is 3.5 Newton meters for the band. Exhaust screen is now clean. Put it back into the holder. I'm gonna use this trusty new Halder hammer which has one rubber end and one plastic end. And that is tight and we are good to go. So for those that are interested in the torque values, the two, the two, the, uh, two exhaust manifold uh, nut torques are 20 newton meters, which I agree is pretty high, but the book says it and I've just done them and they didn't strip, so. The single exhaust mounting bracket that you need to take apart is here and it is as well uh, 20 newton meters. For all those interested, what I call the center cover bolts, there's two on this side and there's two on the other side. Their torque is 10 newton meters each, 87 inch pounds. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching this video on boroscoping the engine as well as performing an exhaust spark arrestor inspection. I know there wasn't a whole lot of maintenance going on and that it wasn't, you know, hugely complicated, but I think it's cool getting in the engine and also uh, seeing that spark arrestor come out. Now, as I said, I did do an exhaust inspection and there really wasn't anything to be found. I think in very salty areas, you'd have to really keep an eye on the exhaust because the wells would probably rust uh, really quickly. So anyway, again, the torque values would be in the bottom. Any uh, parts that would need replacement as part of this uh, video are going to be in the bottom. And uh, please like the video and subscribe, and uh, we'll keep making these. Okay, thank you.